and welcome to another edition of Trailer Talk TV. Today we've got Ian from Open X in the office. Ian, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for coming in today. Ian, uh, before we jump into what we're talking today, let's give an overview of what you do at OpenX, please. Sure. So I'm the Vice President of Platform Demand for OpenX, and I oversee our relationships with DSPs with a particular focus on product development. So what are the challenges they're seeing, where is the industry going, and how do we partner on both strategic level and product level to address that? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, today, Ian's going in to talk about real-time guaranteed. Um, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, guaranteed and programmatic, but we're talking about the concept of real-time guaranteed because uh, you guys have a new product coming out. And obviously, we want to talk about this vis-a-vis -vis PMPs existing, but let's let's get an overview. What What is, um, how would you describe real-time guaranteed? And maybe map it out on the board here, please. Sure. So real-time guaranteed gives uh, the buyer the ability to do a DOID, mm -hmm. much like a PMP with a publisher. Uh, but it's a new flavor. Yeah. And that new flavor is a forward buy. Okay. It's a forecasted buy where the publisher is delivering a guarantee on how many bid requests the buyer will receive. Yeah. And the buyer in return is guaranteeing a fill rate against that so that the publisher, at a specific CPM, so the publisher can lock in and book a forward buy. Yeah. And the advertiser gets guaranteed access like they would with a direct buy. Mm. So let's talk about it because there's obviously some audience thinking involved in this yes. as well. So let's say, let's talk about from a typical buyer's perspective, how mm -hmm. they would buy and how a publisher would accept that, that buy. Yeah, so think about it, you've got really two sides to the equation. You've got your publisher side and you've got your buyer side, right? Yeah. Um, in anything programmatic, you've got two systems working together. So you've got the publisher SSP, yeah. and you've got the buy side DSP. And today, as we know, everything is really powered by audiences, yeah. on the, especially on the buy side. And really, the audiences are synced with a DSP's or really an advertiser's DMP. Yeah. What programmatic guarantee allows us to do, and one of the things that we think is wrong with PMPs today, is PMPs really start with the advertiser searching through publisher packages. Yeah. Whereas in traditionally, a publisher is going to express a need, and there will be almost a reverse auction of sellers responding to that. Yeah. Right? So what we allow a, pub, a buyer to do is actually take a particular audience from their DMP and sync it with OpenX. Mm -hmm. We call it audience escrow. Okay. And in that case, we then know what the buyer is looking for, and we can forecast that against the audiences and, and inventory that publishers make available. So for example, if you have an advertiser with an audience of 10 million impressions, and a publisher has an audience of call it six million impressions, Yeah, we can forecast the overlap. And let's say that's t two million impressions, okay? We then allow the publisher to understand what kind of volume could you deliver to an advertiser on a daily basis, and what kind of price point do you need to deliver that over time so that they can do a secure deal. Mm. And it's through the syncing of a particular audience rather than an entire DSP audience yeah. that allows us the publisher to run that forecast. Once they do that, a deal can be made, but the key thing here is that we still enable the DSP to decision right. on which impressions to take in real time. Right. To make it work, the DSP has to sign up for a fill rate. All right. So you take first party data here from, or third party data from the advertiser uh, or the agency buying on behalf of the advertiser. You take the um, first party data from the publisher, you sync here, and that exposes an audience that's available uh, maybe. Uh, you know, three months down the line, the campaign might last three months. Mm -hmm. uh, you've identified two million users. The um, the agency agrees a price with the publisher, mm -hmm. ten pound CPM, mm -hmm. and then basically you pace that campaign and um, and try and hit that number for the publisher. And publishers guarantee that money effectively. That's exactly right. Right. So the, the at this point, once the deal is negotiated, just like a direct deal gets negotiated, but with some new tool sets. Is treated like a direct campaign. Right. There's three elements here. There's the amount of requests that a publisher can send an advertiser that matches their expressed audience. Yeah. There's the amount of times that the DSP commits to taking that. Yeah. That's important because they can apply all their algorithmic learning and say, I'll take it 50% of the time. Yeah. There's going to be forecasts on that side. Yeah. There's a CPM. And when you combine those three things, you can guarantee and revenue right and that gets booked in the publisher's ad server right. which is something we haven't been able to do with programmatic today. okay so there's, there's, there's an element of i know this money's coming in right and then i can forecast that and i can i can basically put that down my my pnl to my cfo and that's a game changer. right so what's the value then for the agency then for the buyers like 
what what what's the what's the because obviously they do a lot, the, the planner boy does a lot of um guaranteed buys and it's right. very manual you know they push uh the creative to, to the ad server and serves out the campaign not mm -hmm. based around a lot of targeting so is the the true the, the real usp for the um for the buyer is uh is is basically targeting and and and, and uh, use of data effectively yeah it's it's targeting it's data and it's optimization right. so right now when uh sellers are going into agencies they're definitely receiving the message i love programmatic because it delivers better results right it eliminates waste i can learn on the fly yeah. i can make second by second optimizations okay. this preserves their ability to do that yeah. and that's the inherent value to them but on top of that what they're being able to do something that they can't do with programmatic which is go out and lock in forward buys right right okay so that's the value as well because yeah. it's like the spot buy so they have a campaign yeah. running in the presidential election or the European Championships, they want to be able to buy ahead of time effectively. So right. their, their campaigns can run. And then they can go to their media planners and say, uh, hey, you have a $100,000 budget. Let's actually go in and know where that budget's going ahead of okay. time rather than just having to buy across exchanges and right. see where we end up based okay. on competition. So so talk, talk to me about, so this is, a, this is a, obviously a way to combine guaranteed buys and programmatic and have the best of both worlds. So why is this better than PMP? So like you know, I talk to publishers, they say PMPs are messy. You know, there's a lot of effort setting up these deals, and at the end of the day, we're not seeing a lot of incremental rise. So why why use this in, instead of a, a typical PMP campaign? Yeah, so I think there's a few reasons. We touched on the fact that a buyer will actually sync an audience with OpenX, and yeah. will help them discover which publishers are of interest. Okay. So you start by better matchmaking. Yeah. Uh, once you have that, PMPs right now have very low fill rates. Right. So a 10 pound PMP deal right now we're seeing one to 5% fill yeah. rates. Yeah. The, part of that reason is because there's no syncing of targeting, applying the buy side targeting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to naturally increase fill rates from there. Mm -hmm. The other side is that there's no commitment from the advertiser. Mm. Because of that, PMPs are kind of inching their way above the rest of programmatic in terms of prioritization within the publisher's ad yeah, server. Yeah. We want them to be prioritized equally with direct deals, okay. which requires two things, higher fill rates and certainty of delivery. Mm -hmm. And that's what this offers. Mm. In terms of, sort of the, the buyers here, um, are they mostly sort of big brands trying to buy themselves? Or uh, what, what's, what's a typical buyer look like for this, do you think? Yeah, so we see this as a, a DSP will power it in combination with OpenX, yeah. but it'll be a feature that will really be used by brands because yeah. it's part of the planning process. Right. So I don't see this as something that a publisher would want to do with a network of advertisers. Yeah. They're going to want to take the relationships they value and potentially pull new ones with large budgets, attractive budgets, attractive brands. Yeah. And then the communication between uh, the buyers and, and, and publishers are actually direct communication and right. pricing stuff. And the DSP is the SSP or the execution layer. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of sort of the rollout of this product, I mean, where are we at the minute? Are we going to see this now this year, or where, where once when is this? When are we likely to? Yes, see it? you'll see an announcement soon um, with the first DSP having completed their integration. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in kind of final testing mode right now. Mm -hmm. uh, other DSPs are beginning those tests, and then we expect to announce actual campaigns in Q three. Yeah, and the value for publishers gain guaranteed spend mm -hmm. and and the ability to sort of. Uh, get more programmatic as spend. Yeah, so right now you'll often see when you go in and study a publisher's you know, ad server that they are willing to make discounts for large committed budgets. Mm. So you'll often see the highest line items are not necessarily the highest CPMs. Yeah. We believe that with this, advertisers can get the type of performance that they want out of direct deals, which should naturally lead to higher CPMs. Mm. And there's going to be yield mechanisms on OpenX to really optimize across the drive right. layer right. while still meeting your commitments. I mean, obviously, the big thing around is forecasting as well. Yeah, be forecasting. Able to forecast, so that would be executed your side as well, would it? Yeah, that's, that's probably a phase one of this. That's where we put the most engineering time is getting the forecast right. Yeah. And you said, talk about um, the header piece in that as well, that this is going to be part of the header technology you've got as well. Is that right? Yeah, so once you know that there's an overlap of 2 million, with PMP, even if you did this today, yeah. if the publisher doesn't prioritize it at the top of their ad server, yeah. you may only get half of this audience. Yeah, yeah. So with header bidding, we can guarantee that the bid request will go out to the advertiser for the full audience right. and in the form of a deal ID, which will allow them to bid back per the so terms. So we're going to see some yield optimization on the layers that, that traditionally haven't really been touched by programmatic. That's so, the idea for the okay. front pub side, yes. Okay. Uh, Ian, this looks really interesting, and uh, definitely when we get a use case in Europe, we'll get you back in and talk a bit more about it, it's particularly around mobile and video as well. That'd be great. All right, Ian, and we'll see you next week on Twitter Talk TV.